welcome back to another video. So today I have another massive flip through haul and review video for you. This one is going to be all nice little town books. Tatiana Bogema uh, Stalava was nice enough to send all of these to me so that I could share them with all of you. And she actually asked me to look through some of the books and pick the ones that I wanted. So I tried to get the absolute best ones. And so I'm really excited to be able to share these with all of you today. These are all gonna be Amazon printed books. She does also have an Etsy store and I will make sure that her Etsy store is linked down in the description box below if you prefer to print out digital versions of your coloring books. If you check the description box down below, I will also make sure that I have links for every coloring book that you see in this video. I will also have timestamps on this video, so if there is a coloring book that you really enjoy and you're thinking about picking it up for yourself, you can always use the timestamps in the bar below to go back and see that particular flip through again. I just feel like that makes it so much easier for everyone. Let's go ahead and take a look at these coloring books. Before we get into flipping through the books for this video today, I do want to mention that she did also send me these two books, and these are both Halloween themed. So these went into my haul and flip through and review videos where they were only autumn and Halloween books because I needed to get those out to you all right away because we are all searching for Halloween books at the beginning of October and the end of September. <laughs> So these have already been flipped through and I will make sure that is linked in the upper right hand corner if you would like to see that and those videos also have timestamps on them. So if you're only looking for these two books, you will be able to use the bar down below and go right to the flip throughs for these books. The first book I have to share with you is Nice Little Town 8 and this book is absolutely adorable. All of the ones that I chose were ones that I thought were the most adorable and ones that I want to color in. And so I tried to keep it specific to the ones that were my favorites and that I wanted to share with all of you. So this is the front cover. Of course, it is so cute. And then it just says Adult Coloring Book by Tatiana Bogima Stolova. And I hope I'm saying her name right. And then the back of her book has some of the images that you'll find within the book. Okay, so here on the first page right away, we have an adorable little image here that is a fairly quick color. So that is super cute. You could even practice here with a background if you wanted to. Here we have our introduction page. It just says, hi, my name is Tatiana and I'm artist. I want to say thank you so much for choosing my books. Despite the large number of books present on the market, I really appreciate this. Every time I start a new project, I think about how to make my book more interesting and I can't do this without you. To do that, I need to have your feedbacks. Communication with you is very important for creation process with your feedbacks. You give me new ideas and inspiration for new books that become better and more interesting. Sincerely yours, Tatiana. So it is always very important to leave feedback or um, leave a review for the books that you really do love because that's what helps the artist to continue making and bringing us all of these books with this adorable artwork. Look how cute these images are. Now, you can see that this one does have the black backs. And a lot of these coloring book artists are coming away from doing the black backgrounds. And they are keeping them white. It is a single-sided coloring book. And all of her books are all going to be single-sided coloring books. But this book is really, really cool. It looks really futuristic and a little bit steampunky, I would guess, with the pipes back here and everything and I think that is going to be the theme through most of this book of course with all of her nice little town books you've got your adorable little mice here and this one is super cute we have a little uh, beer shop here where you can go get your beer with the cute little mouse here serving everyone so yeah it looks like most of the images here are going to have that steampunky type look at least that's what I would call it but it looks very, very neat, and the houses are really, really creative. We get a little number here above the door, and then we've got the little mouse here in the window carrying a bunch of bread in his basket. 
So this one is adorable and it's a little bit different because we've got just the outside of a house. Again, we have the steampunky type things over here and like a tank and some pipes. And then we have a bathroom in the window. And again, this one is very different. I love her artwork, I really, really do. It's so cute, imaginative, imaginative, <laughs> and very creative. And all of her books are a little bit different. Okay, so this one, it looks like we're changing the theme just a little bit. So this looks like a tree house with a bunch of different levels. And then we're going back to the same theme here. So I guess we have a little bit mixed in. We do. So this one looks a little bit different. We've got the curved roofs. This would be really great to be able to practice uh, doing your shingles on the different roofs of the homes. I actually have a video tutorial where I showed you how to color shingles and if I could find that one I will link it up above in the right hand corner. I believe it was in a Johanna Basford book. All of these images in this book are super super cute. Look at the little mouse up here. He's so adorable. I love the mice in her books. Oh, this one has a lot going on. That looks like it would be a fun color. And I know a lot of us don't care so much for the Amazon paper, but I really have no problems with the Amazon paper. I mean, it is thinner and it has a very little bit of tooth. If you could hear that as I rub my finger across the page. This one almost looks like a boat <laughs> with pipes coming out of it. But I really do love the Amazon paper. I colored in nothing but Amazon books for a very long time before getting paper spoiled. <laughs> but again, she does have an Etsy store. And so if you want to print on your own paper, you all know I always recommend the Spring Hill paper. I love, love, love that paper. If you want a paper that is a little bit thinner, I would go with the 67 pound. And if you want a paper that has a little bit more tooth and is a little bit thicker, I would go with the 80 pound. And I believe it's really just all about preference when you're choosing your paper. I even have a paper that I use that is a smoother paper because some of you like coloring on a smoother paper so that you're not having to lay down layers and layers and layers with your colored pencils. You just want to color and enjoy yourself and have fun. And I'll make sure all of those papers are linked down in the description box below in case you would like to pick some of that paper up. And then here we have illustrations from other books, and I believe that she does this in all of her books. This looks like it's from the Halloween book. Okay, and then this one is from her Cute Girls book. I don't even remember seeing that one. This one is Magic Mask. Great Lions. So I think she has a lot more books than a lot of us know about. This one is Steampunk Volume 2, so I'm assuming she may have two Steampunk books. But in this book, I like a lot of the houses and everything because they do have that Steampunky vibe. This one is Nice Little Dragons, and I think that most of us just know Tatiana, mostly for her Nice Little Town books. I think those are just the most popular. This one is Stress Relieving Designs, Funny and Beautiful Pictures for Relaxation. That looks like it would be fun to color, and it looks like it's quite a bit, got a quite a bit of grayscale on there. And then that is the end. And then, of course, the back just has the images from the coloring book. Okay, so now we have Nice Little Town 10. And this one looks like it might be more of the mushroom houses with the little mice. Okay, so here is the front, and just like with the other one, she's got a quick color here that is adorable if you wanna practice your leaves, and then you could even come in and color a really cool background here. And then here is your This Book, the book Belongs To page. And then over here, it is the same as the previous book, so I'm not gonna read through all of that again. And then again, this one has the black backings that I think a lot of these artists like Tatiana and the Jade Summer books, I think a lot of them are doing away with that now and just keeping the backgrounds white. 
Okay, so this one looks like it is going to be more so of the mushroom houses. Oh, this is super, super cute. Is that, oh my gosh, the little guy's just sitting there up on the bridge. <laughs> I love that one. Look at the trees in the background, and then you can't see the trees up here because they cut off. That is really creative. Then we've got some more mushroom looking houses. And we've got some little acorns up here. This would be a good one to color for autumn. We've got some little strawberries back here if you want to practice coloring fruit. <laughs> Look at this little mouse working out. That is the cutest ever. <laughs> okay, so here we have a tree house and it looks like the house is right up under that tree. And this one doesn't have any mice in it. Here's another one with a cute little mouse. And it looks like the same idea as the previous picture where the, the mushroom houses are kind of right in the tree and then he's sitting up here just reading his book with this little lantern. That would be so cool to color that lantern, lantern and use your Prismacolors or another medium to make the yellow sort of come out and make the lantern look like it's glowing right onto the book. That would be a lot of fun to do. Here's another one where we've got the mushrooms sort of intermixing with the trees. We've got some cute little mice over here. I love their little expressions. This one looks like she's sneezing. <laughs> oh, and we have a little stream over here with a little raft. We have a cute little mouse right in here. She's adorable with her little dress. Oh, it looks like this guy here is just painting a mandala. So you're gonna get to color all of the house and then you've got a mandala that he is just sitting here painting. So you kind of have like a two in one. <laughs> and then we have another house where this cute little mouse is just sitting out here on the steps enjoying the weather. Here we have three houses. This one would be a fun color. I would color each one of these, maybe all muted colors, but different tones. That would be really, really pretty. And look how this just sort of comes up here and almost looks like a fish with scales or something. <laughs> that is super, super creative. And then we've got some leaves over here to color for those of you, wanna, those of you that want to practice your leaves. These look like a, a lot like the Johanna Basford leaves I just colored in a previous tutorial. Let me tell you, that video was pretty popular. My leaf turned out looking really, really iridescent. It was so super cool. And we've got lots of leaves in this book, so you could apply that technique to any of these leaves on any of these pages or in any other coloring book. I'll go ahead and link that one in the upper right-hand corner for those of you that have not seen that yet. These leaves are very different looking. Those would be really fun to color. Oh my goodness. I would do probably an autumn theme on this one and I would put lots of oranges and yellows and tans and different colors like that in these leaves. Oh my goodness, now I wanna color that leaf. <laughs> Here we have a cute little mouse in the window. He looks like he's just enjoying the sunshine that is streaming through the window. <laughs> Here we have a fish hanging off the top of the house. Super, super creative. And then they're just going down the stream in their little canoe. They look like they're happy. They've got all their belongings back here. Oh, here we have some strawberries. It looks like this house is just in the strawberry vine or the strawberry vine is growing over the house. And this would be really good practice to color your strawberries. You could get out your Posca pens your green Posca pens. <laughs> um, I'm not sure which video is coming up uh, first, but I showed a lot of tips and tricks with gel pens in a previous video. And so I brought out also my uh, Posca pens that are colors and I used one of the colored Posca pens and that video was a lot of fun. But I could see doing that on a strawberry as well. These are really pretty flowers here. Those would be fun to color. <laughs> look at this little mouse here. So cute. Look at them just like playing. And then they've got a little picnic going on over here. Oh, here we have some roses. I love coloring roses. Roses are one of the best flowers to learn how to color flowers just because they've got so many overlapping petals. And so it really helps you to learn where to place your shadows and your highlights and all of that. Look at them on this little trapeze thing, swinging back and forth. <laughs> oh my goodness, how cute. And in a tutu. 
Oh wow, look at this one flying around on a big bug or beetle. <laughs> or is that a grasshopper? Actually, it's not even flying. Maybe it's a grasshopper that is just leaping. <laughs> that is so cute. And then that is the end of that one, and she did not include the um, photos from her previous books in this one. But this is the back, and then we just have some of the images again that are contained within the book. Okay, so this one is Nice Little Town Atlantic, and this one was released on July 22nd, 2019, so it is an older book, but I was looking at this one, and I just thought some of the images were absolutely adorable. Now remember, when you purchase these book on, books on Amazon, you can get them for only $5.99, and this is actually book number nine. It just doesn't say nice little town number nine. Instead it says Atlantic and I believe it has a lot of ocean themes in here. And so again we have a cute quick little color. Oh goodness you could practice your bubbles and I do have a bubble tutorial so if you want to see that I'll link that in the upper right hand corner because bubbles are so fun to practice and color and try out lots of different colors when you're coloring them make rainbow bubbles and all kinds of really cool things. But you can practice your bubbles just by putting uh, some circles on a page to practice. But here we have this book belongs to, it looks like there's a lot of seaweed and different like underwater things in this book. You would have to imagine that these houses are out in the middle of the ocean underneath the water. So we have a lot of underwater plants in this book more underwater plants and a house. And I believe this is her only book that is underwater themed. Look how cute her little characters are. Oh my gosh, are they mermaids? <laughs> this one would be so fun to color. Look at the sky up here and then the top of the water. You could practice coloring water here and get out your Posca pens for all those highlights. I love using my Posca pens to add detail to my coloring pages and my uh, gel pens. It just makes it so much more fun when you mix mediums and even apply them right over the top of your colored pencils. Here we have some adorable little fish. <laughs> this one doesn't look too happy. <laughs> and another cute little mermaid with some cute little fish over here. Lots of underwater plants. Oh wow, is that an octopus? <laughs> he looks very different. She adds her creative, um, you know, Tatiana creativeness to all of her little creatures and such and her little mice. Now she's doing it with all her sea creatures and I think that is super, super neat. And her fish and her mermaids. Now I do want to mention that when you go on Amazon, and you search for a nice little town, it looks like there are a lot of other publishers or people that just want to make coloring books taking the same name as Nice Little Town. It really makes me sad when other pe people feel like they have to profit off of these original artists that originally came up with the idea, especially for these nice little town books because I'm pretty sure uh, Tatiana is the one that started this series. And I even saw a nice little town Halloween book that was not hers. And people are just trying to make a penny somewhere by copying other people's works. Now, I've not seen the inside of the books, but I just, I don't know, as far as taking someone else's name or their theme, or even the name of their entire series, it's just really not right. Now we have some more underwater scenery, and we have what looks to be like a little clam here, or a shell, and it actually looks like a very cozy one <laughs> for maybe the Little Mermaid to sleep in. <laughs> And then over here we have another one of her adorable little mermaids and her Tatiana style, creative style. I just love these mermaids. They are adorable. Look at their clothes and how the sleeves are just kind of flowy right here. Or maybe that's supposed to be, no, those would be her sleeves because she's got little hands right here. 
And then here is another one. We've got some fish over here and the little mermaid here just peeping out. And I love their hair, how their hair is just raised off the top of their head, sticking straight up like that. Okay, so now we have quite a few cute little houses here with some more little fish. And then we have this page here. This one is pretty busy with a lot of intricate things on it. And our little mermaid kind of hiding down here, getting ready to take whatever this little plant is here. Okay, so now we have lots of fish and a mermaid. We've got this big, huge old fish back here hanging out behind this uh, the underwater plants. Oh, look at this little octopus. And this fish, he looks pretty mean. I would not want to go near him. Look at those sharp teeth. <laughs> Okay, and that is the end of that one, and then the back just has, again, the images that you're going to find contained within the book. So the next book I have is Nice Little Town Interiors, and I loved this one when I looked at it, and I really wanted to be able to share this one with y'all. So I chose this one because I wanted to change it up just a little bit from the typical nice little town books and I thought this one was a really cool idea to sort of put interiors in with the nice little town series. And I really wanted to be able to share this one with all of you for some of you that may not had seen this one. But again, it says nice little town interiors and we've got a really comfy looking little chair here. And again, our quick color where we could add a background as well. And then we have our front page here again, which is the same as all of her books where she just asks you to uh, give your feedback and such. And then over here we have this book belongs to with a little uh, interior window it looks like. And then this one too has the black backgrounds on it. So the images in this book are gonna be really, really cool. So here we have a cat and it looks like she is actually sitting up at a higher window and it almost looks kind of like a little loft house here. This is so super cool because you got a little kitchen down here. This would be a really fun color. We've got the plants over here. This one has a little bit of everything and it's actually taking the image and looking down on it. So you're actually getting a down view of the bed and the computer and the desk. So lots of fun things to color there. I love these kinds of beds. Wouldn't that be cool to have one just like this <laughs> with the bookcase and the shelves up there with all this intricate work here? And look at these really cool looking draperies and they almost look like they're see-through. So you could have a lot of fun making those actually look see-through. Here we just have the view of a desk. And another one with the see-through panels up here. And it looks like just a kitchen with some dirty dishes. So this one actually has a little bit of grayscale in on here. So it will help you and guide you a little bit to make the wood look like it has a little bit of texture around that window. And then I see there's a little bit of grayscale here on the little couch here as well. This one too, the same thing. So if you were to color over this in here, it would make that look a lot darker. And of course it would naturally be darker because there would be a lot less light hitting that area in there. We've got a little bit over here on the broom. This is really cute. Look at this fireplace. I love that. And we've got these pans hanging up here in the background. I think this book was a really cool idea to kind of change up the nice little town or what we're used to from the nice little town. Oh my goodness, look at all of these mandala type patterned images. In the background here, we've got a hammock. But yeah, this was really, really neat and a really cool change up from what we're used to. And we've got a very different interior book. This is very different from some of the interior books that I've seen like from um, I think it's Creative Haven. Who else has some interior books? I think Coloring Book Cafe has some interior books. And Ava Brown has some interior books. And I think I've done quite a few flip throughs on a lot of those. But this one is just very, very different because it's got that Tatiana style. 
added in. Look, she's got her little uh, cute little fish creatures and other underwater creatures that she brought over from that um, Atlantic book that we just looked at. Here we've got lots of different pictures. That would be a fun color. Oh, here we've got lots of different potions sitting up on the shelves, a nice circular window over here. You can color this in all um, to make it look like the sky. And then we've got a tree over here and a bird. You can turn that into a white dove if you had the beautiful uh, blue background back here. Oh, look at this one. It looks like we have a little bakery. So there is a little bit of everything in this book as far as interiors go. This one is a bathroom. So we've got two rooms here we're looking at. It looks like you're in one room here. We've got the couch and then you can walk through up the steps to go back into this other room. We've got some books up here to color. Look at this one. We've got some frames back here on the wall. You could actually draw your own images or whatever you wanted to in those frames and get really creative. Okay, so this one actually looks like the dog may be sitting outside. It looks like we might have a fireplace inside. I can't really tell if this is an inside side scene or an outside scene or if this is the ceiling. I guess you could do whatever you wanted to do with it. Maybe it is an inside scene, but it looks like we've got tile down here. So it may be outside. This one is very, very different. This one looks like it might be like a little cozy cabin, maybe where one of her little mice live. <laughs> Again, this one looks like it could be the inside of one of her little mouse houses that she is just bringing in from her other books. And so now we are seeing the insides of what we would imagine would be in those cute little mushroom houses that we see all of her mice on the outside of. Here we've got just some shelves. Um, this one gives me Joanna Basford vibes. There's, I think, a page in World of Flowers that is a lot like this. Of course, this one is very different but I love that one. And we've got some little like cat trinkets up here, like a vase type thing. We've got a pumpkin over here. So lots of different things to color. Here we've got some chairs. Oh goodness, get out your gold color combinations. You can make this chair look really, really fancy. And this little stool down here, this one you could color as if it was wood or you could make it look like it was fabric. Oh my goodness, the ideas are just coming. <laughs> And here we have more couches. I love this old antique look on these couches. Again, gold would be so cool up here. And then that is the end of that one. I really loved that book. And then of course on the back, we've got our images that are inside of the book. I saved these two because these two are very, very different and they actually contain two books in one. These are the vintage classic coloring books and I've got volume one and volume two here inside one book. So if you didn't wanna purchase volume one and volume two like you see here on the cover, you could purchase this one that actually contains volume one and volume two. And then I have another one to show you after this. And so here we have the front cover with a cool image. Again, that would be a quicker color. And then we have our This Book Belongs To page. And this book is going to be very different. It's gonna have lots of different things in it. You can see that the pages do have quite a bit of darker line art on them. And maybe a little bit, I don't know if I wanna call it grayscale because the line art is actually darker. And you can see that in this book, we don't have the um, black on the backs here. These are newer printed books and that's why they don't have the black backings on them. This one was actually put out on July 21st of 2021. You can find this book on Amazon for $9.59. So I went and checked Tatiana's Etsy store and it doesn't look like you can get this one with all of these pictures all in one, but you can pick up all of the versions of her vintage classics. Here we have an autumn themed uh, page. So you're getting a little bit of everything in this book. Now, if you go to her Etsy store, 
you will find each one of these books for only $4.99 and then you would have the digital versions to be able to print out on your own paper but if you wanted both books in one you would have to purchase that on Amazon oh I love this page look at that I would love to see how some of these images looked once you put pencils over the uh, darker line art. I think that would be super, super cool. And you can use it sort of as a guide, like here where you have the darker line art, you could put some of your darker colors and shade over that and then put your lighter colors in the centers. And then it looks like all of the uh, darker line art is actually in the places where I would assume that there would be shadows. So this book is very different than her normal, typical, you know, nice little town series. And there is actually one that is very, like, fantasy-like. Well, this one is sort of fantasy-like, but there is one that I fell in love with, and I think that is going to be book four. So we will be getting to that one in the next flip through very soon. Here we have a girl with what looks to be some kind of dragon or something. If we've got flowers back here, we can color. Here we have a girl sitting on a dragon. So this may be the start of the second book. I don't know if it's labeled in here to where the second book starts. It looks like this one is themed a little bit differently. So this one I may actually be the second book where all of the dragons started. So we've got lots of dragons and women. We still have the darker line art. Here we have a mermaid. And then it looks like she brought over some of her style from that Atlantic book that we looked at. But her mermaids look quite a bit different. I wonder if that is a mermaid. She really gets creative here. And then we've got this bird. That bird you can make look so realistic. So here we have another girl in front of a dragon. So it looks like this book is going to be a lot of dragons. We've got some birds. Here we've got a beautiful flower. That flower would be so fun to color. And then the leaves. And because of the darker, uh, the darker line art, I feel like you can make some of this look a lot more realistic. And you could just use that, like I said, as a guide. Here we have some kind of funky looking creature <laughs> with lots of eyes. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> and here we have another one. And that looks really, really different. He actually has a house up here on his back. <laughs> okay, so here we have what looks to be some type of princess or something. And then another creature. And she's sort of just sitting on his back. She's got her little umbrella fantasy like umbrella type thing hanging over her head here lots of different creatures in this book I don't know I'm not really into coloring creatures <laughs> or bugs or anything of that sort but this image is beautiful so you do have a little bit of a mix of different things I do love coloring dragons though I love very mystical looking dragons and I love how she added the flowers on that last page up at the top there. This one has a lot going on, lots of intricate little parts. And then here, you could barely tell that you have this creature sort of hanging out here. You could really make him the focal point of the entire page. That would be super fun to do, and you can get really creative with that. Now this one is very, very different. <laughs> I'm not sure I'd want to color that page, but you can use this if you really wanted to color this. I could see a lot of golds on this page with um, a little bit of metallic maybe. Maybe you want to bring out your gel pens and then do a really cool background with this one. Okay, so here we have a lot of leaves to color. We've got some flowers up here. And it looks like we actually have gems on here as well. Oh, this one is really pretty. I really love that. And then this one looks like it's got some of this darker line art out here on the outside of her hair. I guess maybe you can tell where the separation of her hair is. Like if those were not there, I would not know that her hair ended there. I would just assume that was her hair. So maybe that's the purpose for that one. But I really love this image. That's really pretty. This one is very different. 
very, very different. These, some of these images in here are nothing like I've seen um, in another coloring book. So if you're looking for something different, this one is definitely for you. And then again, we've got the images that are inside the book. And again, this one was Vintage Classic Coloring Book, and this is the first book and the second book. So this is the last one we have, and this is the Vintage, vintage Classic Coloring Pages. This is the third and fourth book. And you can see what the covers look like on the actual books. So this is the third one, this is the fourth one, but in this book you're getting both of these books. This one here is the one that I was really excited about, so I can't wait to be able to show you that. I do wish that she would have put in these uh, double books where one book ended and the other one started. But in the last one, I was pretty much able to tell just because we started with all the dragons and the art looked very different. Here is the initial front page and we've just got this girl here with the big feather coming out of her hat. Again, it's a quick color and then you could just do the background. And then this is the same as the other books and then we've got our This Book Belongs To. And then you could put your name down here if you wanted to. So this book where you've got both version 3 and version 4, it is going to be a recent release. It was just put out on July 29th of 2021. But the actual original books, the Vintage Classic Coloring Pages 3 was put out June 15th of 2019. But the Vintage Classic 4 is actually pretty recent. That was March 27th of this year, so just a few months ago. So you could already see that the artwork in these books is quite a bit different, again, from the Nice Little Town series. It's going to be a lot of mystical um, type, type images or fantasy type images. And again, they have that very creative style to them, and they're very different from what you would find in any other coloring book. Here we've got lots of potions, and we've got, again, one of these Tatiana-style creatures here that look very different from anything that I've ever seen before. Again, here's another one. And we've got, actually, that looks like it may be a frog. <laughs> But that frog definitely looks very different, and it looks like he's got like a lot of very royal looking clothing on. <laughs> and again, here we have a mouse that is dressed the same way, very unique and just a very vintage looking uh, art style throughout all of the book. And here again, we have the mice, and again, we've got that kind of really uh olden, vintage looking art style in the clothing. It looks like maybe a prince and a princess and the clothing looks really cool. We've got the really cool scenery back here behind it. Here we have what looks to be like possibly a fox. Oh, and then we're back to the nice little town type houses. So we've got a little bit of that thrown in. This one looks like a boat and I remember seeing something similar to this in one of the previous flip throughs earlier in this video. This one is very different. Is that an elephant maybe with a house on its back? And then we've got some dragons. This one has a lot of that uh, grayed or a lot of that gray scale back there and a lot of the darker line art again. Here we have what looks to be like a turtle with a house on its back. And we've seen quite a bit of that. This one is adorable. So here we have a cute little girl sitting in the window. We've got lots of flowers around her and she's just looking out the window, enjoying the scenery. Here we have another girl and this one looks really, really cool. Look at this um, on her head with all the leaves and everything sticking out. So everything in this book is just going to have that very vintage art feel. And then here we've got some more creatures. And we've got mushrooms and flowers. And then this one, I don't know about this one. This one's a little creepy to me. <laughs> I would not color that one. <laughs> That's kind of scary. Oh my goodness, look at this mushroom has a face on it. <laughs> 
That is very different. I've never seen anything like that. And look at these little cute creatures up here. <laughs> Oh, this one is really, really cool. Now, this might be the start of the next book because I know the next book was all about fairy tales, and this is the one that I really wanted to be able to share with all of you. So I'm pretty sure that's what this is because this looks like it might be like Jack and the Beanstalk or something. And we've got this beautiful castle back here. The clouds um, are kind of framing the castle, which looks really, really neat. They've got grayscale on them. This is definitely the start of the second book. Look how beautiful. This one I really, really loved. I really love any book that has sort of that fairy tale, fantasy, art feel to it. It just kind of puts you in another world. Like this page here, she's like actually underwater and it's just like this image of the girl and the water is kind of above her. We've got a boat back here. Here we have a princess. This one is absolutely beautiful, my goodness. I have so many ideas for her dress and look at those beautiful flowers on her dress. Here we have a horse with a lot of intricate work on him. That is just gorgeous. And we've got our flowers back here. Oh, we have the Wizard of Oz in Tatiana cute art style. Look how adorable that is. So y'all, it looks like I saved the best for last. <laughs> That's always the way that it should be. <laughs> but I love this book. This is so super cool. We have a knight here with his shield and the dragon. It looks like he's fighting the dragon. More dragons and the girl looking out the window with her beautiful long hair. <laughs> this one is adorable. And then this one here is a little bit different. So you can see that a lot of them still were getting some of the uh, grayscale on here, but the line art on this one is not as dark as the other ones. Oh, I love this page. We've got a little tree over here. Look at the girl here with her little bird. It looks like the bird is singing. There's some little other, I don't know, that looks more like some kind of creature. That one up there doesn't really look like a bird. <laughs> We've got grass coming up out of the shingles in the roof, and the house just has that vintagey feel to it. We've got mountains in the background. There's a lot going on in that one. And here we have what looks to be like a snow queen. Oh, you could definitely practice your uh, snow on this page. Falling off of the root rooftops, get out your gel pens. Your glittery gel pens, you can make that snow look really glittery. You could use Posca pens. So many different ideas. Here we have a beautiful girl with lots of flowers and everything around her. Her dress, again, has all that very vintage-y, vintage um, intricate artwork on top of it. That would be really cool to take your gel pens out again to work with a lot of this or even use your markers on this page. Here's another one that is really, really beautiful. Oh my goodness, I am loving this book so much. Okay, so here it looks like we've got the fairy godmother, and then we have what would be Cinderella and her carriage over here with the cute little mouse. Oh my goodness, I wanted this book just for these images. Look at this one here. This is so cute. And this one, again, she's got one of her creatures here, and it looks like we have a whole house up on top of this creature that looks like a fish. <laughs> he doesn't look too happy. It must be all that weight he is carrying on his back <laughs> and still trying to stay under the water. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Look at her hair. That is beautiful. And you could create the reflections here in this mirror. That would be super, super fun to do. Oh, wow. Look how beautiful. Look at her dress. Oh, this one is so super cute. We've got our little mushroom house here. Is this one Thumbelina, maybe? I love this. This is so adorable. Look at her outfit. And this one looks like it might be Hansel and Gretel possibly and if it's not you could make it look like Hansel and Gretel you could even draw yourself a little Hansel and Gretel here walking up to the little house 
but it looks like it could be covered in candy, maybe. You could definitely make it look like candy, or you can bring some gold detail to the doors and some of the other areas or the intricate pieces on the house. There's so much going on on this house. And then that is the end of the book. And again, we have some of the images that you will find in the book. So that was quite a few coloring books. We had six coloring books we flipped through, and I hope that you enjoyed this. Thank you, Tatiana, for sending me these beautiful coloring books. I am really going to enjoy coloring in these. And if y'all want to go back and see a specific coloring book, don't forget that there will be timestamps to where you can just move to wherever you would like to in the video. If you would like to check out one specific flip through for a second or even third or fourth time, you will find everything that you've seen in this video in the description box below. As always, I will see you in the next video. Happy coloring. Bye.